All right, folks, so now I've got this uh, Oryx in a place where I can get it ready for travel. So we're talking about any of the taxidermy, hide, skull, that type of stuff. I'm gonna cover that, but I'm also gonna cover how I package up meat to put it on airplanes as checked in luggage. It'll save you a lot of money if you do it this way. Not always are you gonna be able to get everything home this way. You might have to ship some, you might have to give some to friends in the area. You might have to explore those options too, but to get the bulkier meat home, get a hide home, get a cape home, if you watch this video, I think you'll get some tips where you feel capable to do that. The first thing you gotta do, and this is where planning ahead does make sense, is you gotta find somewhere where you can do a little work, right? This is not real clean work, particularly the taxidermy hide cape stuff. If you're gonna face cape an animal or something like that, you've gotta have a good spot to do it in. Here, I've actually got uh, family in the area, so I'm just taking advantage of that. I've got a table set up here, and I'm just gonna face cape the animal and take the skull out first. So the reality is, is almost always, you're not gonna have the place and the time on a trip to boil the skull, the skull take the brain out, all of that. So what you have to do is you have to get this in a situation where you can appropriately package it up for shipping via UPS or check it on the airline. The two main things you have to make sure don't happen is you gotta make sure this thing doesn't stink and you gotta make sure this thing doesn't leak. What I'm gonna show you here, I have no idea if it aligns with any you know, if UPS's policies or any of the airline policies, all right? I'm not, I don't know that it does. In some ways, it probably doesn't. That's up to you guys, and you guys should look into that. But I'll show you what's worked for me. The main thing is I'm just paranoid always about making sure it doesn't leak and making sure it doesn't stink. If you do those two things, I don't think you're gonna have a problem on either one of those transportation cases. After we deal with those two things, then we'll deal with the fact that we wanna make sure that your horns or antlers don't break. So I'll show you some ways to deal with that. And this goes for if you're packaging it up and shipping it or getting it on the airline. So the first thing is, I've tried to take as much meat off the skull as possible, right? Just so there's not a ton to deal with. What I typically will do as soon as possible, you know, hopefully a day or two before, I'll salt this this face up real good. And this isn't gonna do anything other than just draw moisture out, okay? Moisture that's gonna leak into your, your packaging and stuff. Instead of it leaking into your packaging, it's just gonna, it's just gonna get, <clears throat> that salt's gonna absorb it, and you won't have just raw liquid floating everywhere, right? Or you'll have at least less of it. So I'll put a ton of salt, just go buy a couple pounds of salt, there's no reason to be chinty on it, and just rub it in everywhere. And you'll see like, when you see the, it start to bleed up like that, you know that that's gonna, there's gonna be moisture there, so I'll just cover it as much as possible, put it in the nose cavity, put it in the mouth, and then you'll see, like I did take off the bulks of meat on this. I don't take out the, the eyes because that opens up the brain cavity, and then you've got, you know, you've got kind of li uh, liquid that's captured right now, all of a sudden now you've got it open. But what I do do is I take out all this tongue, the tongue, trachea, all of that. You didn't hear right here behind the brain and top of the base of the skull there, top of the spinal column. If you can do it a day before, it really does help because then what you can do is the salt that turns, the salt that turns slushy on you and is absorbed liquid, you can get rid of that before you package it up. Today, I don't have time for that. I've got a flight this afternoon. So I'm just gonna do my best to salt it really good now. So at least I don't have like, you know, a lot of running liquid around it. As you're gonna see, that doesn't mean I don't package it like crazy. It's just a precautionary measure. The other thing is it's gonna keep any odor down. If this thing were to get you know, stuck, uh, I had flight delays or flight cancellations or something, and this was stuck somewhere warm, that salt is gonna stop a lot of that, that intense odor development. All right, so once I've done that, I'll put it in a garbage bag right here and I'll tie it up. And don't go cheap on garbage bags, okay? You don't want something that's gonna puncture real easily where you're gonna have leakage. If you have leakage, you're gonna have a problem either with the airline or UPS. I'm gonna tighten that up as tight as I can. Okay, so there I have it there. Now the next thing I'm gonna do, if you can find it, you're not gonna be able to find it everywhere. If you can find one of these little shrink wrap uh, rolls here, you can get these at Home Depot or Lowe's. These are gonna be really handy because they're gonna make this just look tight. And 
as you go up the base of the antlers, this goes for any species, just make sure to really snug that in. So just regardless of the orientation of the animal, you're not gonna have leakage. And right here as I finish up, I'm just gonna go up here like this. I'll pull it off here so it's all sealed up there. It's that base of that antler or horn. But on this one, as I finish it, I'll go up the other horn or antler. Okay, so there you go, cleaned up. And you can see that, that's just gonna look tidy. There's not gonna be leaking. After I secure all the horns uh, and get those you know, supported so they're not gonna break because that's my next concern now that I got the leaking odor under control. Once I secure these, I'll show you how to do that. And I make my box. Before I put this in the box for the final, final destination, I'm gonna put one more good garbage bag over the top of this just in case there's some leakage that comes out and none of that ends up into the packaging or God forbid outside of the packaging and really cause you issues. Oh, one last thing I forgot, not necessarily mandatory. Don't put it on the horn or antler because it will leave a residue and it's hard to get off. You don't want this on hides or anything either because you'll pull hair out. But on the shrink wrap, it's fine. I'm just gonna take and just run some of this down here just to seal up this part of the bag. Okay, so now you can see guys, we've got the good garbage bag on there to hold in odor or any liquid that comes off. We've got the salt, you know, sucking in that liquid so we don't just have fluid running everywhere. Then we've got our shrink wrap over that to keep everything snug and another liquid barrier. And then we have our tape on here. Our Gorilla Tape or Duct Tape, what that's going to do is where we tied our garage, our, our garbage bag up here, this is going to seal that off. So if you, do, if you can't get that, because it's depending on the base of the antlers, you're not going to be able to get that waterproof. Do that, and that's going to create another barrier. And then, like I said, before I box it, I'm going to put one more good garbage bag on it to make sure we have no odor or liquid problems. So one thing to note is I clean up through this process because it's just good practice. You don't want to go in to a UPS drop off or into an airport and have like blood and hair on the outside of your packaging. That's how you're going to run into more scrutiny and problems from the get go. But if you clean up during the process, you can avoid that. Once you get all that covered up, like I'm at, I'm at the point now where this is all covered up, I'm not gonna have any more blood, in, blood and hair that can get on the outside of the packaging. So why not clean up and make it so that's the case? All right, so the next step here, guys, is we're just gonna take some of this foam. You can get it at Home Depot, Lowe's. You can even find this stuff like anywhere where they're doing, you know, unpackaging appliances or something. You might have to go dumpster diving depending on where you're at. Um, but you know, just this dense foam that'll hold up and it'll give uh, some support. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna ballpark three pieces, one for here, one for here, one for here, and I'm gonna make them a little bit longer than where I want them to be, and then I'm gonna compress them down in here. They're gonna maybe separate the horns a little bit, but they're gonna give that up and down support. Okay, so just a little brace like that, sweet. Before I do the last one at the tips, I'm actually gonna put some chunks of pipe insulation here just to protect those tips. Okay, so here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut pipe insulation. I'm gonna cut it, you know, three or four inches beyond, beyond the point here, because I'm gonna actually fold it around that point. These, particularly these animals with sharp, with sharp horns, um, you have to be really careful about those points popping through. You gotta imagine these boxes not necessarily ending up how you want them to be set right if these antlers are down and all that gravity pushing on there you can have big problems where those those horns come through so on this oryx because they're so pointy i might actually take one last piece of this foam and stick it in the top of the box kind of stick it on top of those points just as an extra precaution but generally what i do is take this pipe insulation find your your tip and then i'll just fold it over like this and then compress it. It's gonna go right in there. And this one, we don't have to worry about the horns because they're already covered. 
So. All right, say hi, Aaron. Hey. We're, we're getting it prepped up for, hey, for the meat going back with some of us on the airplane, and then some's getting left with family. But I got my mom at work, cousin at work. I even helped a little bit. <laughs> and we got, so we actually were able to vacuum pack it up a bit, and we're going to try to at least get it partially frozen before we put it in bins and get it ready for check luggage. So. That's the plan. All right, so the next part of this Oryx uh, project is we got the uh, meat frozen actually last night in my grandmother's fridge. So if you've got a friend or something somewhere where you can freeze the meat, it helps you out a whole lot because that way you don't waste uh, weight in terms of like airline baggage fees and that sort of thing on dry ice. You can use dry ice, but if you have the meat just frozen solid, it's awesome because even you know, honestly, overnight or something like that, if it got, if it, you were to get a flight delayed, you're still gonna be fine if the meat goes in here frozen. But a couple key things. So what I've done in the bottom of this uh, bin here is I have the cape and I have it double bagged. And one of the key things uh, about that is double bag your meat in capes or anything else that has the potential to leak. Because if you have, if your baggage leaks, they, they have the right to throw it away. And that would be the worst case scenario. So make sure you use good bags. Use these contractor bags that they sell at like Home Depot. You can find them at some grocery stores. Don't use cheap uh, garbage bags because what'll happen is when you start lifting up all the weight in those cheap bags, they stretch and they open and then you can have leaks. So what I do is I actually double bag everything in two contractor bags. And what I do is I try to shimmy it down there and get all your air out and just with the overhand knot you should be able to make it you know basically airtight and then what I'll do is I'll take this and if you have somebody to help you it's great but I'll take this bag I'll lift it up and then I'll set it down into another contractor bag and tie that really tight also and put it down and that's all I do really other than that I'll just put the lid on it and then Tape it up with really good tape, really good duct tape or Gorilla tape or whatever. Put your name and phone number on it and it's ready ready to go. You can use these bins. They're not necessarily leak proof, so you have to keep that in mind. But you're, you've got the bags to solve that. My trip's actually pretty short and it's direct flight, so I'm not overly worried. If it's like a multi-leg journey, you might want to go with a cooler. And I'm actually sending my mom with some Oryx, so you can just buy these, these little inexpensive coolers. They used to be like 15 bucks, but because of inflation now, I just bought one at Walmart and they're like 25 bucks. But if you fill one of these up all the way to the top, what I found is they're almost right at 50 pounds, which is nice. So you really don't have to worry about going over the weight limit with this size cooler. With a bin like this, you're gonna go over the weight limit if you overfill it. Uh, in this case, I'm actually assuming that and I'm just gonna pay the overage charge, but you have to check and see because every airline has different rules. Some of them just won't take bags over 50 pounds. Some of them will just charge you from 50 to 100. I don't know of any that will take anything over 100 pounds, so you gotta keep it below that. But anyways, that's the plan. We're gonna tape these up, and the whole Oryx project is done. You can look at the box there. So that's the head 
and horns there all wrapped up that we did earlier. And then the meat's going in this. And uh, that's pretty much the whole deal. So anyways, guys, I hope it was helpful to you. If you liked the video, please uh, hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.